Now let's continue reading at verse 18. So when you gain the spirit of wisdom and revelation about God, then what happens? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So then your understanding becomes enlightened. So it talks about eyes of understanding. So that's referring in a metaphorical sense. So the eyes of understanding, that's the idea that the Bible is referring to. Eyes concerning the area of your understanding. That they would be enlightened, so opened up, revelatory, revealing, enlightened. Buddha tried to do a sitting under a tree. You'll never get any enlightenment through that one. It's all done through God himself giving it to you. Praying for the people to reveal it to you. When the eyes of your understanding are being enlightened on what? What do you need to know? That ye may know, here's something important. So this is what Paul prays for these people. So it's knowledge about God, but he gets more specific here. More specific about that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. All right, so there are several things that uh, you want to know about your eyes of understanding being opened up and revealed. What you need to know is, first of all, here are several points concerning about the peak of spirituality, so to speak. Number one would be the hope of your calling. All right, what is the hope of your calling? So we actually have to look through five verses to understand this. First of all, you're going to look at the book of Titus chapter 2, please. Titus chapter 2. So let's see what this hope of your calling is referring to. Let's look at the book of Titus chapter 2. The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ who is in you and He is that hope. He gives you the hope to live through life because of that rapture that is coming at the end and He fulfills and completes that hope. So that's the idea. The hope goes starting with Jesus in you and then fulfilled all the way till the rapture where He takes you up. Let's look at the book of Titus chapter 2 and look at verse 13 looking for that blessed hope. What is the blessed hope? And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So this is Jesus Christ appearing for you, rapturing you up to heaven. That's also called the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Notice that it's also called glorious appearing. Did you see that over there? It called it glorious appearing. So hope and glory are intertwined here. You might ask, why is that, preacher? The reason why is because the hope and glory is intertwined because your glory is up there. You're going up to glory. He called you for that. Now go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. So, so let's build on these verses. Scripture through Scripture is usually the teacher, right? So scripture through scripture is usually the teacher here. All right, so let's look at the book of Colossians chapter 1. Notice that the hope starts with Christ in you. That's where it starts. Where it starts is that when you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ starts to live inside you, that's why you all have a hope. Why do we have hope? Because Jesus Christ is alive. He is in us. Look at Colossians chapter 1. And look at verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Notice that wording is very similar back at Ephesians 1, right? What God would reveal to his children. This is what Paul has been praying for. Of this mystery among the Gentiles, what is the mystery? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. So that's Jesus Christ. He's in you. That is a mystery that he would stay stuck inside you, right? Amen. That's something else. So that's Jesus Christ in you. 
we're going to look at another passage. Go to Colossians 3 now. Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians 3, verse 4. Notice that the text reads, When Christ who is our life shall appear. See that? Remember, Christ who is our life. Why? Because of Colossians 1. Christ in you the hope of glory. So he's your life. So when Christ is in you, it starts there, but it does not end there. It ends with what? Who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. So that's your hope. Your hope starts with Christ in you. Good teaching. He starts inside you, and then guess what? While you're... While you're walking along life's road, one day I heard a voice so sweetly say, up there in heaven, I am building thee a beautiful, beautiful home. Home, sweet home, home, sweet home, there will I never roam. I see the light of that city so bright. My home, sweet home, says the hymn. But what does that mean? We don't really understand what it means. Literally, you're walking across life's road, Christ in you keep giving you that hope. And that hope becomes fulfilled when you get raptured up to heaven to be with him. Amen. It doesn't end with Christ in you. It starts with Christ in That's you. Good. It ends with Christ taking you up in glory with him face to face. So that's the first thing you got to understand. Why does it say calling though, right? Because he's calling you home. Now look at 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2. This verse is evidence of 2 Thessalonians 2 of a pre-tribulation rapture that you will not go through the tribulation. Because when you read from the tribulation standpoint, from verses 3 all the way down to verse 12, this is all people in the tribulation. But Paul says at verse 13, but we, distinguishing saved Christians from the people in the tribulation, we what? Look at verse 14. Whereunto he what? Called you by our gospel to the what? Obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good. See that? He called you to be raptured up in heaven, not stay in the tribulation and rot. Thank you, Lord. Alright, now let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8. I told you I'll be showing you a lot of verses for this one. Unless you understand all these verses, then you'll understand what it really means. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now notice how the glory and the hope and the calling go all hand in hand with Christ being in you, but then completing it at the rapture. That's why the rapture is accurately called the blessed hope. That's why Jesus Christ in us is accurately called the hope. Why? So basically it says, didn't you know then that basically that means right now you're living in hope even when you're depressed, when you feel hopeless, that's just your flesh. No, you're living in hope right now. You're breathing in hope Thank right you, now. Lord. And that hope can never go away no matter how hopeless you feel. Amen. Now that's something that people don't ponder and think about. And that's a blessing. Yes, sir. Now look at Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at verse 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to compare with the what? Glory. Glory which shall be revealed in us. So in us, I'm going to show you in later verses, but inside you right now is that rapture power. You're holding the resurrection, the rapture power in you right now because it's Christ in you. And when he comes down, see, you're a part of his body. So you have to go up with him at the rapture, even if you yeah. don't want to and scream and whine that you want to go through the tribulation. No, you're not if you're a saved Christian. Yeah. Right. Now keep reading. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in what? Hope. hope. See, we're all in this body of corruption, and we want to be free from it. We want to be raptured from it, so to speak, right? So God says that there is a hope that we're going to be free from this 
bondage of corruption on this earth. What is it? The rapture. Keep reading. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, I told you so, into the what? Glorious liberty of the children of God. Look at verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the what? Redemption of our body. I told you so. It's to be break free from this body and to go to heaven when you get raptured. Verse 24, for we are saved by what? Hope. See, this whole thing is about hope is the rapture. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patient wait for it. See, hope is tied to Jesus Christ invisibly being in you and believing by faith without seeing invisibly that this invisible Christ in you would rapture you up to heaven. Amen. That's what it is. That's, That's all based on hope. All right, let's go back to the book of Ephesians. Wow, let's go back to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. So now I think today we got a, a little bit of our the eyes of our understanding opened up with this first point now, right? How about that? 